Peter Nygaard and his illegal development at Sims Point has been in the news for years. But now, the government has agreed to do what is right. Before granting him permits, the Bahamian public has been given the opportunity to voice their opinions. Save the Bay's investigates to bring you all the facts. For decades, this Canadian fashion mogul has been enlarging his property. He has almost doubled it. This was accomplished by using groins to trap sand as it naturally flows by. He has been dredging the seafloor and adding the spoil to his property. He has never had any permits for the creation of new land. The fact is, billionaire Peter Nygaard has simply been stealing crown land. Save the Bays had to go to court to end this violation of Bahamian law. Before this injunction, nobody did anything to stop him. Would any regular Bahamian be allowed to get away with this? There is a natural flow of sand through Clifton Bay. This flow maintains the beaches along the shore like Jaws Beach. It keeps the seafloor healthy for our fisheries and it helps keep our seas clean and pristine. By blocking this flow of sand, Nygaard is endangering Clifton Bay and Jaws Beach. The beach will naturally erode away, but fresh sand will not replace it. Can Nassau afford to lose one of its last public beaches to a private foreigner? The dredging has disrupted important seagrass ecosystems in the bay threatening commercial species that are important for fishing, diving, and tourism. The silt from the dredging has damaged nearby reefs. But Nygaard has already shown his disdain for our natural reef environments. He has built structures right on top of coral. He never had permits for these structures either. The marine environment in the Bahamas belongs to the public. Nygaard is stealing this resource for himself and then destroying it. But finally, Nygaard is being forced to apply for permits. He wants to be retroactively approved for the damage already done. And he wants to be granted permission to continue the expansion of his private development by encroaching on public property. Save the Bays commends the government for allowing the public to have a voice in this development before everything is approved. After Guana Key, Wilson City, Blackbeard's Key, and Bimini Bay, this could finally be the beginning of a true democratic process. All Bahamians should participate in this historic debate. Don't save the Bay!